the Lewis structure for copper to sulfide has a copper two ion bonding with a sulfide ion. Now this staircase of semi-metals separates metals, copper is one, from non-metals, sulfur is one. The reason that's important is because metals and non-metals, when they bond, always form ionic compounds. And ionic compounds occur by transfer of electrons from metal to non-metal. Now, sulfur is in group 16, so it brings six valence electrons with it. I want you to draw your S. One, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And that shortcut I just showed you where everything in group 16 brings six valence electrons does not work for these transition metals. Instead, you have to go based on the charge that you know it ends up with. Here, by name, it's definitely copper two, but that information is also hidden here. Sulfur always wants a charge of minus two. And in order to balance it on a one-to-one -one ratio, the copper would have needed a charge of positive two as well. So, draw yourself a copper with two valence electrons. Boom, boom. Now, the other thing to note is that nonmetals always want a full valence shell. Most of the time, that's eight electrons. That's called the octet rule. Sulfur brought six, so it needs two more to complete its octet. Lucky for us, copper brings two electrons that it's willing to give away. So it gives one electron there, a second electron here, and now sulfur has a full eight. Copper is completely empty in what was its valence shell. Everyone's happy. Let's draw the completed Lewis structure. Sulfur now has eight valence electrons, nice and stable. That's two more electrons than it had to start with. So it's a minus two charge. Copper gave away both of its valence electrons. So draw it with none. And because it lost two minuses, it has a charge of positive two. Subtracting a negative gives you a positive. This is the complete Lewis structure for copper two sulfide. And this here is me showing the transfer of how it happened. Thanks for being along for the ride and best of luck.